Here we go. Okay, welcome everybody. This is a new year, 2022. We're still here and hopefully you are too. Um, thank you for registering on Zoom with us. And then also we're doing a live feed on Facebook and everybody's welcome to uh, listen in and ask your questions and all that. Um, this is, uh, we gave about 25 webinars, uh, Ask the Building Expert series on different uh, topics such as building codes, contractor licensing, concrete spalling, plumbing, roofing, painting, uh, sound transmission, and all sorts of uh, interesting topics, which you can always uh, watch later through our website on uh, the on-demand feature. Select the webinar and you can watch the uh, video. So this year we got 22 separate webinars planned on various topics. So um, stay tuned and join us. Uh, everyone's welcome to ask questions or comment. If you have questions and you're on Zoom, ask it through the chat feature or the Q&A, or if you wanna talk, use the raise hand function and we'll get you um, on the live uh, talk. If you're on Facebook, you can post your comments or questions on directly on Facebook and hopefully we'll be able to uh, read, read them. Okay, so uh, once again, the reason why we put together this series, Ask the Building Expert, is to help building owners, condo associations, property managers, homeowners, anybody who has anything to do with uh, buildings, whether you live in a building or you maintain one, or you own uh, one for investment, um, you know, we're available to help you. If you look at the photo, uh, the image, on the left, that's me in front of the Millennium Tower a couple of years ago. I got a new one I just took, um, uh, when was it? I guess it was last, last month. I don't know, I lost track of time here. But um, the Millennium Tower, by the way, is in San Francisco and it's leaning. It's been leaning for years and it's sinking. Uh, about three inches, according to the documentation, three inches a year. So what does that equate to? That equates to in a matter of four years, that building would have sank by one foot. And uh, that's pretty scary. But anyway, they're trying to fix it now. And I have a upcoming webinar that I'm going to talk about uh, the history of the Millennium Tower. So stay tuned for that. I think I'm giving that in May or something like that. I got, I took some photos and talked to some people. But anyway, um, the topic today is concrete spalling causes structural collapse. And you're probably aware of a lot of buildings today uh, were built in the 60s, 70s, and most of them are made of concrete. If you drive around uh, the city, you'll see that there's a lot of high-rise concrete buildings, even low-rise concrete buildings, condos, apartment buildings, and such. It doesn't matter what city you live in, whether you're in Honolulu, uh, whether you're in Las Vegas or um, Seattle, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, or New York, Chicago, it's pretty much the same. And in uh, December last month, I actually flew to uh, New York and then um, I came back for a week. Then I flew to San Fran. I went to um, Portland, Seattle. And so I got my fill of uh, buildings. So when I went to uh, Kauai after that, uh, there's not too many high-rise buildings, and I could enjoy nature a little better. But let's get right into the uh, crux of the uh, topic here, uh, concrete spalling. So um, 
concrete spalling is basically cracks in the concrete and it's caused by different factors of uh, the environment. And the, the main causes of damage to concrete is the sun, uh, the rain, uh, basically the weather, um, humidity, a lot of buildings in Hawaii and buildings that are in coastal regions such as uh, LA, New York, San Francisco, Seattle, uh, they have salt in the air and it's coming from the ocean and especially uh, Florida and, and Hawaii, the salt in the air ends up on the building. So there's salt on the building uh, carried from the trade winds and uh, the salt is damaging to concrete. Concrete is not poor, it's not waterproof, it's porous. That's why it needs uh, waterproofing or paint on it. So what happens when the uh, moisture or water that has the salt in it, and it's called chlorides, end up penetrating through the concrete and hitting the reinforcing steel, the rebar, the reinforcing steel starts corroding and rusting and, and it expands. It expands seven times the size. And when it expands, guess what? It forces the concrete to move and crack. And that's what causes concrete spalling. The cracking and damage of concrete basically due, due to uh, corrosion and expansion of the reinforcing steel. So the main causes are the environment and uh, causes the damage, but there's also other contributory human causes and human factors, not only the environment and what are those? That's um, if you don't pay attention, if you're a building owner or property manager and you don't pay attention to paint the building when it needs to be painted or doing inspections to determine uh, minor cracks that could lead to major cracks and major failure in buildings. And I'll talk more about that um, as, as we go through the webinar. But basically in a nutshell, the sun, wind, rain, salt, air, uh, humidity, all causes uh, concrete spalling and failure. Okay, now, how, how do you determine uh, concrete spalling? One way is easy. It's visible. If you walk around a building, and this photo is was taken um, in a basement of a parking deck. So if you walk around and you see that there's pieces of concrete missing or your concrete is damaged and you see um, the brown areas which are corroded reinforcing steel, that's already a red flag and that's visible. It's easy to um, detect. You don't need to be a rocket scientist or structure engineer or uh, inspector to determine what the problem is. It's pretty obvious, okay? So um, the photo is a support um, beam that's supporting the upper deck. And so as you can see, uh, this beam is pretty massive. It's, it's kind of huge. So once the beam gets damaged, already it's, it's a problem and it needs to be fixed. So if you're in the industry and you're walking around, or even if you're not in the construction industry, if you're an owner, uh, let's say of a condo, high-rise condo, and you, you're in your parking area and you look and you see this, that's already a cause for concern. You know, so, and it not only affects the uh, condo buildings, but the same thing affects shopping centers, uh, golf course structures, uh, schools, any kind of uh, uh, building that's made of concrete. So just be aware of that. So this is a visible structural damage that you see. And you might see the same thing, not only on on a beam overhead, but you might see it on a wall or a column, or you might see it on a concrete slab. So this is obvious. So when it's obvious, it's pretty, pretty easy to say that uh, the building hasn't taken any steps to 
to fix the, the problem. Okay, now if it's not visible, let me show you the next slide. It, it's considered concealed structural damage. And if you look at the, the photo, this is a photo I took uh, of a condo unit. You open the uh, sliding door to go out on the balcony and this is the floor of the balcony. As you can see, it looks like the concrete is, you know, not, not as smooth as it should be. Maybe you think it was, you know, that's how it was built. It was defective. But when I took a hammer and I tapped on uh, the areas that were uneven, I heard a hollow sound. No, that's a spalling condition. And what, what happened is the rebar got corroded and started expanding and now the concrete topping is uh, popping. We call that popping and it creates a void, a hollow void. So if I, if I took a, a chisel and I chipped out uh, the concrete, that topping would easily come, come off. And uh, most, for the most part, I'd probably see um, corroded rebar. Okay, so this is an area that should be repaired. Now, the caveat to uh, concrete building that has a concrete lanai or balcony is you want to fix your spalls and you want to waterproof it. You don't want any kind of floor covering over it, such as uh, in the old days, they put carpet or AstroTurf. That's a no-no because what happens is the um, covering absorbs water and the water just sits on the concrete and eventually um, it seeps down into the concrete and hits the reinforcing steel. So you don't want any floor covering. In fact, if you put uh, tile, ceramic tile or hard tile over that, make sure uh, you, you have uh, good uh, waterproofing. But I do not recommend even tile or any kind of floor covering. I always say just go bare concrete, waterproof it, and then it's easier to see. Once you put tile on it, when the grout, if the tile cracks and the grout's porous and it's not sealed, water can seep through and guess what? Now you have water sitting between the top of the concrete slab and the bottom of the tile. And in some cases, you have a little pond going on and you can't, you can't see it. The owner can't see it because the water is covered over with the tile. Okay, so that's what we call concealed structural damage. That's why in order to determine if the building is spalled or not, we have to do a, what's called sounding. And you get a hammer or a chain and drag it over and you listen for hollow sound. In this case, I took a hammer and I was tapping the area and sure enough, you could hear the hollow sound. Now, if the sound is not hollow, then that's a, a defect or that area could have been previously spalled but not repaired correctly when they didn't smooth it out. And it's, it's basically solid, but it just looks like it's small. Okay, so you don't have to do this yourself. You can hire an engineer, a consultant, or a contractor to do that. So if your building is un, undergoing small repair, make sure the contractor does the sounding. Because if they only look visual, and they only fix the visual and don't sound it, they're gonna miss a lot of areas, okay? So the only right way to do things is to sound every square inch of the building in order to find the spalled areas. And once they find it, mark it and repair it. It doesn't make sense to locate it and um, then don't fix it and save it for a rainy day or when the building has money, that, that doesn't cut it, okay? so. That's the difference between concealed structural damage and visible. Okay, so uh, sometimes even after uh, the sounding's done and it's all fixed, two years, three years later, the building you know, has completed uh, initially their entire spawning project, but then you see some isolated areas 
of concrete popping up or cracking. Okay, that's kind of normal. It's not that the contractor missed it. If he didn't miss it, these are new areas that came up. Okay, uh, if he missed it, then of course he should go back and, and fix it. Now, it's not easy to fix spalling on a high rise building because let's say you have a 40 story building, how are you gonna fix spalls that are on on the side of the building on the you know 30th floor. That's why there's rigging involved, uh, sky climbers, and that's why it's not easy because they have to use special equipment and basically do the repair from you know up in the sky. Let's see what else we have to talk about here. Structural problems. Now if you look at the photo on the left, that's that's basically a, a wall, okay, that had some spalling and it got chipped out and you can see the reinforcing steel. And the reinforcing steel in this photo looks like in pretty good condition. Um, you know, when, when the steel is made, it's real shiny and, um, you know, silver looking. It almost looks like a whole thing of silver. But then over time, with age, it turns uh, black um, or, or a dark brown color, which is normal. Most of the time, it's really dark brown. And it comes with these ribs, these, um, you can see these, uh, it's not totally smooth. You got these little uh, lines that are called ribs that are, um, you know, kind of rough. If you still see those, that means the rebar is still in good shape. If your ribs are all worn down and the uh, rebar is like half missing, then you know that's not a good sign. That means the degradation of the reinforcing steel got so bad where now you need to replace that section of the steel. If you look um, on the larger photo, this is of a support column. As you can see, um, it's it's failing. And if you look closely it doesn't even look like it was constructed properly. Uh, instead of, uh, I, don't, I don't see any reinforcing steel. I see like a thick kind of wire mesh or a cage over it. So um, I would question the, how this column was built in the first place because the, the concrete doesn't even look that solid to me. Okay, so these are different structural problems that are, that are could occur in a building. Now, sometimes if you see a crack, that may be a shrinkage crack and not a structural crack. So make sure uh, you have the uh, consultant or the expert uh, identify what kind of crack is and you know fix accordingly. Let's uh, move on. Uh, let's talk about some structural collapse causing injury and death. Um, there's cases where uh, it's so bad and maybe it, it was not visible. It, it, it could have been, uh, the reason why it was not visible is because you can't see the cracks because it was not repaired properly. Instead of demolishing the concrete and excavating the bad concrete out, chipping old concrete and making sure uh, you get to solid concrete and patching it. Instead of doing that, some uh, building maintenance people paint over it. And what does the paint do it? The paint just hides the problem, okay? Um, this photo was taken of Alamoana Shopping Center and there was uh, a bad accident where the railing had collapsed. And the problem was that the base the base post of the railing was embedded in concrete and the concrete was spalled, but you couldn't see it because it was covered up with paint. Uh, water was getting in and, you know, over years, that's what happened. So the railing base got corroded and the concrete spalled. That was the cause of the accident. Okay? And uh, it was, considered a concrete spalling failure, railing and concrete spalling failure. And that, that was 
I think one of the biggest um, spalling accidents uh, in, in Hawaii, of course, it occurred at the biggest shopping center in Hawaii. So it made national news as well as, you know, Hawaii local news. So that was a most notable incident. And uh, another one, and uh, oh, by the way, I actually went to the site at Ala Moana, and just the same as I went to the site at this Kalihi apartment building. And the reason why I use the term uh, most notable incident, that I could call it an incident, because I don't consider, consider it an accident. And the reason why is um, because the owners knew of the problem or should have known, and they should have fixed it. That's why I don't consider it an accident. It's an incident. It, um, you know, in my opinion, there's a difference. But let's talk about this apartment building. Uh, I got called to because it was a, a accident. I got called by the uh, local news station, and just the same as the Alamoana one. I got called, so I went down, and they want to interview me and ask me questions about what I think caused the problem, uh, could the problem have been prevented, and this and that. So in this situation, uh, the second, second or third floor uh, railing, and this is an older apartment building, and so instead of metal railing, they had uh, brick uh, concrete uh, block rails. So that was a different type and uh, of railing. So that was a railing that had collapsed. Two guys, I guess, were leaning on it, leaning on the uh, wall, and it's called a railing wall. And, and the wall collapsed and they fell over and, and they got uh, injured. The ambulance had to come and take them away and everything. So the fire department uh, was called to kind of clean up the mess and put caution tape and all that. So this photo shows the uh, fire firemen uh, working. And then I have another photo. Uh, this is me looking at um, looking at the building. So as you can see, the the corner of the wall had just collapsed and fell over. There's no wall anymore. So if you're on the walkway, there's nothing to protect you from falling over. Um, and it, it was pretty scary. Uh, of course, I didn't take this photo because it's me looking. Uh, so this photo came from the uh, TV news. But anyway, um, anytime there's a concrete building where there's a, some kind of failure and people get hurt, uh, that's, that's a problem to me. And could this have been prevented? Yes, because uh, the spalling was was to me obvious when I looked at other parts of the building, it was a similar condition. So it was lack of maintenance repair. And, um, you know, I don't know how the insurance thing got settled, but um, these kind of things, and this is partly the reason why I'm doing these webinars to educate uh, people to let them know it doesn't matter if you're a building owner, property manager, a tenant in the building, uh, owner of a condo unit or a neighbor. Anytime there's a problem with a building, you know, say something about it and hopefully things are going to get fixed. Now, the problem, too, is that it's a money issue. People say, well, we don't have money to fix it, but money shouldn't be the reason why not to fix it, because look what happened to the Florida building, you know, collapse. Okay. So those are the uh, most not not notable incidents. Um, and that's probably the whole synopsis of this webinar. It's not a, I didn't want to make a, a long one hour webinar. I wanted to, you know, take some Gave you the gist of the matter, what I wanted to convey my thoughts for building safety and health, and then also leave time to, to
take questions and you know hopefully give good answers to the questions. So basically, that wraps up my my talk. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about was the most recent uh, incident was the Florida building collapse and. Uh, this was not only the most recent, but I think it was the most tragic and uh, the biggest uh, collapse, I, I think, uh, in the United States. I don't know how it fares with the, with the world, but it, it was bad. And uh, I gave uh, two or three webinars already on it. I was interviewed uh, on the news I also wrote uh, at least one or two press releases about it. And the, the whole message that I wanted to convey uh, was that this should never have happened. If people maintain and fix their buildings, they should not be a collapse of, of this nature. Uh, so it, it all boils down to you know, maintaining, maintaining the property, doing proper inspections and following what your expert consultant's advice is. Sometimes I am hired to go and inspect buildings and I say, I give them a report, I say, here, you gotta fix this, this and this. And then they go, okay, thank you. And then we don't have any money, so it doesn't get fixed. So that's, uh, you know, kind of tragic to me. Okay, so uh, moving along. What do you miss? You missed, uh, if you didn't tune in to our previous webinars, which we gave last year, I think we gave 25, uh, go to our website, askbuildingexpert.now.site and go to the webinars on demand and select what topic you want and watch it. Uh, share it with your friends, your colleagues, if you're in the industry. Um, and it doesn't matter whether we gave the webinar already if you have questions, specific questions pertaining to that topic, you can feel free to email or contact us and we'll be happy to help you on that. Um, so we also have the uh, takeaways, which are copies of our PowerPoint that you can download. Um, if you want uh, to download the videos, you can do that too. Uh, it's all open. We're sharing this information for free just to help people uh, with their uh, construction and building uh, problems, or hopefully you don't have any problems, but maybe you may in the future. And then uh, what's coming up is um, we have a webinar a couple of weeks from now on electrical systems. I don't think I've given a talk on electrical, but we got a good one there. And then in uh, February, we have a webinar talking about uh, waterproofing and then one on uh, con construction warranties. So um, these webinars were created uh, over the years I've developed um, you know, list of topics that are hot topics to me. And how do I know they're hot? Because these are topics where people call me or email me and ask questions about it. So I've made uh, webinar topics uh, of the hot issues of the day, the year, and I created the webinars based on that. Not only am I providing information based on my own experience, which I think counts the most, but I also do uh, research and if I need more information, I have access to a lot of industry experts uh, in the field uh, in Hawaii and also um, on the mainland and even worldwide. So that's what I do. I put it all together to, to you know, help everybody. Uh, this is a photo of me. I was interviewed on Times Square Today show and it was broadcast on major media outlets. So um, I must know what I'm talking about. Uh, hopefully, let me see. Uh, you know what? Some, something happened to my PowerPoint, but I'll, I'll stop the share screen after this. So right now I'm opening it up to questions and comments. If you have any questions or comments later, 
you can uh, feel free to email Lance Luke at hawaiibuildingexpert.com. Our phone number is 808 422 2132. And then our Ask the Building Expert uh, website is askbuildingexpert.now.site. This is actually a separate website from my. Uh, company construction management inspection and it's actually a whole brand by itself that we feature a webinar and there's links to our other websites and all that so I'm going to open it up for questions now and the format is we're going to take questions over zoom first uh, chat or the Q&A and then uh, we're going to look at the uh, Facebook comments. So let me shop, uh, stop the share screen and we'll take the questions. Okay, Martin, are you around? Yes, Lance, I'm here. Oh, um, sorry. Sorry, Martin. I totally forgot. I was so excited. I didn't introduce you. By the way, everybody, this is Martin Pea. He's the back end IT guy. He actually puts all these things together, PowerPoint and Zoom, and he may, makes sure that we're on track. And I don't know it's sort of like if I was a musician playing at a concert, he would be the guy directing traffic and in charge of the soundboard and all that. But anyway, uh, that's Martin, and he's going to uh, hopefully uh, read the questions that I can uh, answer. Yeah, well, just to let you know, I, you know, I've been monitoring the Facebook. You've got a lot of viewers over there, but uh, I didn't see any questions on there yet. Uh, and maybe we'll get some more after. Okay, and, sounds uh, good. Yeah, checking um, our Zoom side, nothing's come in. Nobody's raised their hands on uh, any particulars. But I do have some other uh, questions here that I thought we'd uh, share with you. Um, this first one is, how do experts determine hidden concrete damage and structural problems? Hmm. Must have just uh, come on or something. <laughs> so can you repeat that again? I didn't quite get it. Oh, okay, sure. It's, uh, the question is how do experts like you determine hidden concrete damage and structural problems? The hidden, the hidden things, yeah. Oh, okay. So um, the answer to that question is, um, if it's a horizontal surface, like a lanai or a parking deck, uh, we can use this method called the chain drag method, where uh, you take a chain and drag it over the concrete by li and listen to the sound. And we can tell the difference between uh, solid concrete and hollow concrete. And um, it's not that hard to do. The chain has to be pretty heavy and thick. So, you know, if you, you know, watch, um, if you ever watch these wrestling matches and some of these guys have these big chains around their neck or like a biker gang or whatever, they have these big chains. Those, those are the heavy chains they, that, that we use. You can't use a light chain because then, you know, you can't, it, it doesn't do the same function. So it got to be kind of heavy chain that you can buy at like a hardware store and drag it over the concrete and then listen. Um, you know, I'm not saying do it yourself, but that's what we use, okay? Because you don't want to have a hammer and you have a, a parking deck that's uh, 20,000 square feet and you're over there hammering each square inch. I mean, that looks kind of dumb and it just wastes too much time. So we use the chain uh, drag method. Um, the other method is the sounding by using a hammer. And so we use a, a hammer and we tap every square inch of, of the wall of a building or a column or a ceiling and look, you know, look for uh, damages, but also we were listening to a hollow sound. And that's what uh, we hear. If we hear a hollow sound in more cases than not, that's a indicative of uh, concrete spalling. Yeah. Um, so that's the methods that we use. And 
uh, when we do that and we find areas we want to mark it. So normally we use uh, cans of spray paint and we make X's or we draw uh, a square or a box or rectangle or some kind of denotation that this area from here to here is spalled. Sometimes I'm on a rig and I take the can and I'm drawing an arrow that's like four feet, six feet long. And it starts from one end and I have the arrow pointing. And then I, uh, at the end of um, the, the other area, I draw another arrow going the other way. What that means is that a whole section of leading edge on the lanai is spalled. So there's different ways, but you know, a lot of building owners don't want us to go and graffiti their whole building. Um, so we probably do it one stack at a time or one section at a time. A stack, by the way, is like uh, one side of a building from, let's say, the first floor up to the rooftop. That's one stack going down, you know, vertical. Okay. So um, we're aware of that, but you know, the job has to be done. So a lot of times I get flack, like, hey, you guys are graffitiing their building. You're tagging our building. It looks ugly. I said, well, this is only temporary. We need to do it in order for the contractor to know what areas he needs to fix, right? So um, basically that's how we determine uh, concealed spalling areas. Uh, sometimes it's not as, as, as accurate as we want, but that's the best uh, method that we use. There's other methods uh, where we can bring x-rays and things like that, but I don't, you know, think we need, need to do that. I think our, our methods work uh, just as well. So that's, that's what we use, but yeah, thank you. Well, thanks. Thanks, Lance. Thanks for sharing your trade secrets there. Yeah. Okay, the next one will get back to a topic you, uh, you hit on. It says, uh, can you tell us the latest on the Florida building collapse? Has the cause been determined yet? Um, the last report I got, the, the causes haven't been determined yet um, as far as conclusive because the, the federal government has an agency that is overseeing um, investigation and they haven't provided any kind of conclusive report yet. Although um, at the time of the collapse, I'm the one that said it's concrete spalling. And I think uh, the report would come out showing that as one of the causes of the collapse. Um, but um, to let you guys know that in January, uh, December of last year, see, there were like, um, close to 30 court cases. And um, in December, there was a, a grand jury that they consolidated a bunch of cases. But anyway, in December, the jury um, heard the case and concluded that uh, there was, the failure was due to, um, you know, maintenance of the building. And uh, there was all kind of, other comments about what should be done. And they, it basically mirrored what my comments were initially about how this thing happened and, and why it shouldn't have happened and things that should have been done uh, to prevent uh, this kind of collapse from occurring. One of the uh, main issues was the money and the reserve study. So, uh, for you guys that don't know, the, the Florida Building Association for that specific building that collapsed, they had uh, close to $700,000 in their reserve fund. But what was the cost to repair the damages at that time, you know, prior to the accident? The cost was $15 million. I, I would say it, it was probably more like $16 million. So... If you take the money that they had in reserve and compare it with the amount of money that it costs, that association was $15 million short. And now how can that be? 
that doesn't make any sense. But there was a, a really dumb law in Florida um, that stated that the association uh, does not need to fund. So what that means is you can have a reserve study done and let's say the reserve study says that, oh, you need to fix your concrete spalling. You need to do this, do that. And it costs 15 million. There was no law in place forcing the association to collect the money uh, and, and by the, the funding collection so that the building had the money to fix the spalling. It, it's ridiculous. In Hawaii, we have a reserve study law that mandates a reserve study and mandates collection of funds to fix the building. So there's a difference. The other thing is they have a, a 40 year recertification program where uh, every 40 years um, they have to hire an engineer to come out and inspect the building and then submit the report to the, the city uh, building department. That to me is ridiculous because if you have a building that can fail at a 10 year, 15 or 20 year mark, why are you waiting 40 years to have the uh, mandated inspection? So that was one of my gripes. So I said, you know, Florida should change the law to mandate inspections every 10 years or 15 years, right? In Hawaii, we don't have such a mandate. We don't need to inspect our buildings ever. Once the building is built and the building inspector signs off, that's it. So Florida actually is a little better because they mandate 40 years, but they're off the mark. Hawaii's caveman days wouldn't even have a, a mandatory inspection requirement. So it's like wild, wild west, right? Um, what's the other thing? Reserve study, uh, mandatory inspections. Uh, oh, um, so they had inspections done by their own structure engineers and submitted reports, but uh, the reports weren't followed because of the money issue, okay? Um, the other issue is they had major failure around the swimming pool, but then they couldn't fix it because of the danger of a collapse. Now, that's kind of ridiculous, right? So uh, had they taken more action, they should have closed part of the building down, you know? It doesn't make sense. If you can't fix a building because it's dangerous, then what do you do? You ignore it. You know, you, you close the building down and you take action to fix the thing. So, you know, I also blame the city of Florida building department for not, you know, inspecting and issuing a citation, you know, condemn the building or else or whatever. So there was all these things then I think when the final report comes into play, all the things that I stated will be listed in the report. Uh, I'm kind of anxious to see what, what's going to come out of it. There's speculation that the building wasn't designed properly, it wasn't constructed properly. Uh, of course, that's probably stuff that's going to be thrown into the mix. But that's the latest. Uh, when I get more information, I'll be happy to you know, share it with uh, everybody. Cause I know there's people that are on the webinar that are tuning in that are, are from Florida and from other parts of the United States that have the similar climate like Florida that have spalling or they belong to a condo association. Maybe they're a property manager or a board member or an attorney that does real estate condo law or, you know, things like that. Okay, we got any other uh, questions, Martin? Yes, we do, Lance, and thank you for that answer. It's like very insightful on what's going on or what happened in that case, but also for us, uh, you know, making sure we've got the proper protection. So, great, thanks for sharing that. Sure. Uh, the, the next, the next question here is: um, On average, how frequently should we uh, should we have a spalling inspection completed on uh, our condo? So this is from a condo owner, I think. Yeah. Okay, I would say every five years um, or every 10 years or in between, if you really want to get, uh, you know, proactive every year. And, and some of my um, uh, building clients, I 
I go every year to do inspection and it doesn't take that long. I walk around and look and for the most part, it's okay, but don't wait like more than 10 years. So, because the, the building should be painted every eight to 10 years. So if you're waiting 15 years to have an inspection or you're building painted, that's way too long. Okay, so the idea is more often than not, you have uh, inspections done. And I know it's, it's uh, you know, costly to have them done, but um, you, you don't want to spare the, spare the costs in lieu of a safety problem. You know, if a piece of concrete falls off and hits somebody and kills them, and it's discovered that you didn't inspect your building for years and years and years. Uh, don't you think you're going to be liable for that? You know, so it's one of um, proper maintenance and keeping the building safe and healthy. But then there's also a, a liability protection too. So uh, in you ask your insurance company that has your general liability policy, how often should we have our spalling in, in spec? you know, inspections done, and they'll tell you, well, what did the consultant say? You know, if the consultant tells you every five years, and that's what you should do. Now, because what happens is, if you don't follow the expert's opinion, then you're already guilty. And the insurance company can say, well, we're not going to pay the claim, because you didn't follow the proper industry standard. Okay, so what are the industry standards? Well, that's why I'm here to, you know, let you know. So um, don't go past 10 years. Now, if your building already has spalling and cracks and paint peeling, you see, uh, you know, rust stains dripping down, then already that's like, you better do something, you know? So if you have, if your building already has spalling and I'm saying, inspect it you know every eight to ten years you don't wait every eight to ten years after that you got to do something now i'm talking about the building that has been repaired there's no spalling then you can inspect it you know maybe eight five eight or ten years later okay so i want to be sure that you know i'm not my statements aren't uh, misleading to you Okay, any other questions? Oh yeah, let's begin. Uh, one more here. Um, this one says the apartment building photo that you showed us was scary. <laughs> Do you estimate the cost to repair? Uh, did you estimate the cost to repair the structural damage? I'm not sure yeah. The photo. Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, that Kalihi building, when I, when I got called, um, from the news to meet them out there for the interview. One of the questions a reporter asked was, um, you know, how, how did this happen? And um, how could it have been prevented? And what's the cost to fix? So the, the answer to number one, how did it happen was easy. I said, well, you got, uh, you know, spalling cracks and all that, and the building's unsafe, it should be condemned. And then they're like, oh, well, wait a minute. The owner's not going to like that. Well, tough luck. I'm not going to like his lack of maintenance. But the second question was, um, how could have this been prevented? And the answer to that is, yeah, if the owner had fixed, fixed the building properly. Now, oh, well, don't you see areas that, you know, the concrete looks newer and, you um, you know, wouldn't that be a, a repair? And I said, yeah, but that's that's uh, uh, not a proper repair. That's not according to industry standard. That's like a handyman coming over and, um, you know, buying, you know, concrete from the hardware store, mixing it and patching a crack without determining what was the cause of the crack. You can't just patch the crack. You got to figure out is a crack due to the reinforcing steel that's corroded if so you gotta you gotta dig out all the soft concrete attend to the reinforcing steel right if it's real bad 
uh, cut it out and drill a new one in, okay, coat it, and then patch it with structural concrete patch, not quick creep that you can just buy, you know, that you use for your uh, sidewalk repair or whatever. I mean, we're talking structural concrete for a concrete, reinforced concrete building. Now, the last question was how much, you know, would, would the repair cost? So I walked around the building, I calculated the number of floors and saw what needed to be done. And by the way, spalling also occurred at the roof line too. So not only at each floor level, but the roof too. So it was a smaller apartment building. Uh, I'm thinking maybe they had like 15 to 20 units. And I told the reporter, you know, my fast guesstimate because I'm not measuring things and, and using my calculator. I'm just going ballpark by what I could see, you know, based on my 40 years of doing smaller repair. Here's my ballpark estimate. It's going to be at least 300000 to repair. And, and, and she was shocked. And she said, wow, that almost sounds like uh, the cost to build a new building. I said, well, it probably is going to be more once they get into it, but there was so much spalling that occurred that I could see that was visible now. We're not even talking about the, the areas that I couldn't see. Um, and you're talking about lanai slabs, lanai walls, walkway walls, uh, stairways, and the roof. Um, so if you think about it, a 15 to 20 unit apartment building costing 300,000 to repair, that's huge. And, and it, it was huge because the building was ne you know, neglected. There was no proper repairs done for 20 years, right? And so she was taking notes and then uh, she was kind of surprised. But unfortunately, um, when they do a news interview, it gets edited for time. So a lot of good stuff that I said um, was edited out, but thankfully I get to give my opinion here. The other thing, other question she asked was, um, wouldn't the, the local city building department, the inspector be liable because he failed to um, properly inspect? And I said, well, they only come out when you call them. They're not driving around town looking at buildings and whipping out their violation notice uh, uh, booklet and you know writing violations. That's not their job. They only get they only get called. They only go to the site, the property, when they get a call and say, "Oh, um, can you come out to?" Uh, 123 Kalihi Street, because um, I noticed there's cracks in the building. They would only come out when someone calls them. They don't go out on their own. Okay? So that's part of the problem. Plus that they're shorthanded too. So um, that that's why that I always um, support a mandatory inspection program, although it's, it's going to be costly and people say they don't have money to pay extra for that. Um, you know, that to me, that's better than not having an inspection done. Now, the mandatory inspection doesn't have to be by the city. It could be um, building owner, if you own an apartment or a uh, condo board, you know, you're in charge of your condo building. You hire uh, uh, inspector, structure engineer, construction inspector to come out and inspect the building and give us a report. Okay. So the city doesn't have time, they don't have the manpower to do their inspections anyway, but at least it's a step in the right direction. So I'm always for mandatory inspections and uh, I'm, because that's part of uh, safety. If you don't inspect, how do you know if the building's safe or not? You're just guessing and you're just saying, well, um, we haven't had any accidents, so I guess my building's safe. Well, that's not that may not be the case, okay? Not having any accidents does not equate to the building being safe. Proper inspections, right? And repair if there are spalling would equate to the building being safe. So that's my um, 
talk for today. We got any other comments by chat or um, Q and A on Zoom or any Facebook questions? Uh, no, no more came in. Yeah, that's uh, that's it for uh, for the moment. Okay, good. Uh, on behalf of Martin and I, uh, we thank you for joining us on our webinar uh, today. Uh, please uh, join us again for upcoming webinars and. Uh, we we want to share our information with you to help keep building safe and and healthy and help keep you safe and healthy for the new year uh, 2022. Uh, this is a year of the water dragon, by the way, and Chinese New Year is I think February 1st or 2nd or something like that. Um, anyway, uh, please attend our upcoming webinars and. It doesn't matter where, whether you're from Hawaii or any part of the United States or uh, a foreign country. Uh, we're, we're open. We want to share our information and we hope our information helps you. Uh, please join us on upcoming webinars. And if you have any questions about any previous webinars or the one we just gave, uh, please email or call us and you know we're, we're available. There's not too many people out there that are willing to help provide free information um, to you guys. And because I'm feeling, Martin and I are feeling so good because it's a new year, man, it was a rough uh, two years, but this pandemic is still not over. Here's our offer. If you're in Honolulu, okay, or you're anywhere on the island of uh, Oahu, okay, and you, either own an apartment building or a property manager, or you're a property manager or a board member of a condo building, and you want a spalling inspection, we'll go out and do a one hour spalling inspection for you. How much would we charge? Well, it could be uh, $850. How much are we gonna charge? We're not gonna charge you, okay? That's our offer because we're feeling so good. It's a new year and we want to help out. So here's the deal. Contact us, schedule it with our office. Uh, we'll go out there and do a one hour, up to one hour spawning inspection. We'll give you advice. We'll, we'll walk around your building. You can show us stuff if you want. Um, We'll, we'll actually take pictures and we'll give you a formal report, okay? All for how much? Free. You can't beat free because free is the magic word. And you know, I'm Chinese, so it takes a lot to get me to offer something for free, okay? But we're doing it because, you know, we wanna share the aloha, we wanna share expertise experience, and we wanna keep you and the building safe. So. This offer may be canceled at any time. We don't know, but we're opening it. Uh, Marta, what do you think? For at least uh, 30 days or so? Yeah, that sounds good. So uh, take us up on our offer. By the way, I've done probably 10,000 inspections already to date. I'm not going to tell you how many of them were free. We need to make money too because you know we need to buy lunch and stuff. So anyway... Thank you for attending. Those of you who are on Zoom or Facebook Live, we welcome you. Join us for the next thing. And we're signing off. Happy New Year. Aloha.